So if you're not really a fan of spiders, this story may mm. not be for you. The Joro spider <laughs> apparently is heading up the East Coast toward our state. Wait until you hear the details of this yeah. one. NBC Connecticut's Kevin Guy spoke with an expert and joins us now live from West Hartford. Tell us all about it, Kevin. Hey, Mike and Keisha, good evening to you both. Now, I've had the chance over the last couple of hours to learn a little bit more about this spider, and I'm starting to come around a little bit on it. Of course, it comes with some pretty scary adjectives like venomous and very big, but experts say there's actually more to this spider than meets the eye. Yeah, no, 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 I'm good. I'm good. I'm definitely good. Mario Edwards isn't an arachnophobe, but showing him pictures of the Joro spider. What was that mean from like years ago? It's like, hide your kids, have your wife, hide your husband. It's like, yeah, that's the first reaction that comes to mind, that comes to mind when I see that. Yeah. The species, which is native to Eastern Asia, is marching its way north from Georgia, expected to land around New York and New Jersey as early as this summer. Wow. Wow. Um, I would not like that near me under any circumstances. But experts say while you might jump at first glance, you don't have to panic. A little a little jarring to look at, but really not that bad when you take a step back. <laughs> yes, yes, yeah, step back. Gail Ridge, an entomologist with the Connecticut Agricultural Experiment Station, says the good news, they don't actually fly. Like a lot of other spiders, their offspring balloon and float around using silk. And the venom won't hurt you, only creates mild discomfort for a few days, similar to a bee sting. Spider is extremely timid. Um, they build webs high up in trees. She says they live mostly high above your head and actually prey on common pests like mosquitoes or mammarated stink bugs. Well, they're actually doing some heavy lifting for us. She says they're harmless to people and pets, so she's asking people not to kill them if they show up, but rather contact an expert. You know, many people will panic, kill it, and then ask questions later. That is the last thing you want to do. A scientist does need to have the a spider in 3D <laughs> for identification purposes. <laughs> Michaela Carr says she would prefer it stops on the border of New England, but quickly offered her four-step plan just in case. My initial reaction would probably be to scream <laughs> and then would be to remember what I've heard about it, <laughs> then to see if I had time to take a picture and then probably run. It's my four-step plan. <laughs> And these spiders also bear a striking resemblance to a native species here in Connecticut, the yellow garden spider. So experts double down and they say, make sure you identify it with an expert before you take any action. We're live in West Hartford tonight. Kevin guys, NBC Connecticut News. Guys, back to you. We appreciate the information, but you're still going to have to miss me with that one. <laughs> Thank you.